in the spirit of collaboration and with the goal of sharing our good fortune in having had six successful career award recipients this past year alone, we thought it would be a great idea to share some information about how we accomplished that. The uh, initial academic years of a young faculty are particularly trying ones. They're transitioning from a PhD or a postdoc into academia. They're building a group, a lab, their research program. They're navigating a new environment. And on top of all this, we expect them to hit the ground running and apply for funding, something that's actually a technique that all of us need to learn how to do. Helping young faculty understand how to write a proposal, how to frame a vision, how to express their ideas so they're appealing to others and they uh, transmit the full impact of what they want to do is very important. So what we have done is actually use the expertise of our senior faculty and those who have won the award to have these uh, sessions in which they coach younger faculty into how to write their proposals, starting with the draft and then iterating on this many times. So career proposal has certainly um, had a big impact on jumpstarting my uh, career. And uh, since it's considered uh, to be a very prestigious uh, award, uh, it immediately put myself, kind of put me on the map uh, of uh, young and up and coming researchers, faculty members. Uh, and it helped, um, you know, garnering additional funding, uh, uh, being recognized in the field, getting invitations uh, for talks and, and conferences. Uh, so it really was an important, um, you know, starting point for my career. The NSF Career Award is more focused on, or focused on the entirety of an applicant's package. So that includes not only their research and the quality and impact of their research agenda, but also on what the applicant plans to do to broaden the impacts of their work to society in general. We've formalized the process of how to support our assistant professors in making their most successful application. It isn't simply another proposal. It's really intended to be a blueprint um, for the short to midterm of an individual's career. And so these sessions are really helpful in, in um, encouraging the assistant professor to think broadly about the scope of what they want to accomplish in their career and orient them in that way. Now, the significance of the Career Award is actually manifold. First of all, it gives the young faculty a lot of self-confidence that they are on the right track because a panel of their peers have decided that this is a worthy career topic for them to pursue. So they can actually begin to develop a relationship between program directors that will help them secure funding in subsequent years. It's a five-year award, so by the end of the award, most of them have been granted tenure and been promoted to associate professors. And we have seen time and again that career award winners have an easier time to go through the tenure process and the promotion process and even further on, we have some early uh, NSF career awardees who then made it in four years from associate professor to full professor. Once we know who's going to be applying for a career award, we match them up with a panel of senior faculty members. Those include their formal mentors, so all of our assistant professors have a formal mentoring committee. Um, so it might include people from that group or others who are uniquely poised to give useful feedback on the career proposal. Even though NSF career reviewers tend to be in your area, they can also be outside of your area and that's very important to make sure that whatever proposal you put together aims to reach a broader range of engineering experts. Having faculty from different departments and different research areas brings in different perspectives. So I think that's one unique feature we have. Uh, you know, so typically faculty members writing their career proposals will ask for input, but they will ask for input uh, from people in their field, in their field of expertise. I think our workshops allows uh, the junior faculty member to be exposed to a wider audience and hence rethink their research uh, in, a, in a broader light.
In terms of time, uh, to put together a 15-page proposal, which is what NSF uh, requires, uh, takes you probably about a month uh, in terms of gathering all of the background information, really thinking deeply about the research project that you're proposing and developing your educational program. Uh, the nice thing about the, the coaching program that Tandon offers is that they offer these coaching sessions uh, a few months before the proposal is due. So you can take this document that it took you a while to prepare, then pass it through uh, a board of colleagues that uh, can then look at it and give you feedback, and then provide ample time for you to revise and, and really take in the information that they gave you uh, and make a much stronger proposal that when reviewers look at it, uh, uh, you'll be very clear. I applied uh, for my career uh, proposal um, in 2000 and I got the news that I uh, you know, received the award in uh, the spring of 2001 and I was already seven months pregnant uh, with my first child. So I was very worried that I wouldn't get the award because you know, it would have been very difficult uh, you know, giving birth in June and submitting the proposal uh, in July. And, and can you, at that time I realized uh, that women faculty face different kinds of challenges, uh, you know, including childbirth and uh, um, supporting your career uh, at the same time. I received a very thorough feedback from a very rigorous mathematicians essentially and their feedback was very useful in a way that it helped me identify some weaknesses of my proposal and I decided I'm not gonna apply it this year I'm gonna apply it next year and that was instrumental because uh, it gave me another nine months to put together a lot stronger proposal the next year we were comparing two drafts and it turned out that the second draft was so much stronger that um, it was out of question that the first one probably would have been rejected. We have a deep bench of folks who are familiar with this process and we ask them to engage in our support program in different ways. For the folks who are still assistant professors and recent career award winners, we don't invite them to be members of the advisory panels. Um, because it's an awkward position for an assistant professor to be getting feedback from another assistant professor. We do solicit their help, however, by asking them to share written copies of their successful career proposals, and they've been really generous in doing that. So, so by now we have a library of successful career proposals in the school that we make available confidentially to the, to the assistant professors who are applying. It's important to look at a variety of successful career proposals uh, um, because different people have different styles um, and, uh, and it's important to have a clear research goal and to be able to articulate uh, you know, what one wishes to accomplish. It's, it's not as much of a scientific exercise but it's ra rather an exercise for your imagination. Try to imagine what you would like to achieve and based on this imagination product, try to build your research vision. Try to harsh out what kind of technical developments it will need. Early on when I went in, there were actually two topics that I was interested in writing my career proposal on. So one of the really useful aspects of this process was, I don't remember who the specific mentor was, but someone telling me um, when I was confused about what topic to write on, to write about the topic I was most passionate about and that that would come across, uh, my passion would come across in the writing and not to overthink it and not to over strategize, just go, go with what you feel the most passionate about.